President, the country faces two large economic challenges. The first is growing our economy, creating jobs, getting the economy back on track. Second major challenge is cutting the deficit. I'd like to talk about both of those very briefly. I have four charts here, uh, one that relates to jobs and growing the economy, and three that deal more specifically with the deficit. Unfortunately, here in Washington, the debate has shifted almost entirely to a discussion of the deficit. Too many people in Washington are pretending that our efforts to generate growth in the economy accomplished, that they, it's a done deal, that we have recovered from the recession, we can now focus full time on how to cut the deficit. The facts are that uh, this is simply not true. Uh, Professor Alan Blinder, an economist at Princeton, former deputy uh, chair of the uh, Federal Reserve, testified before the Senate Finance Committee a couple of weeks ago, and he made the following statement. He said, the economic recovery is mediocre at best, and unemployment remains high. To me, these conditions describe a bad time to put the economy on a diet, on a diet of either spending cuts or tax increases, end quote. Let me, let me point to the first of these charts to underscore the point that Professor Blinder made. Uh, the recession that we have just gone through created a very deep hole. And if you look at the number of private sector jobs that were lost between November of 07 and the, the end of, uh, and essentially March of, of 2010, uh, you can see that it is the or February of 2010, it is 8.8 .8 million jobs that were lost as a result of the recession. Uh, while things are getting better, uh, it's clear that uh, they have not gotten enough better. We have now created 1.8 million new jobs since we began adding private sector jobs. So we still have a shortfall of about 7 million jobs that need to be created in order to get back to where we were in November of 07. And of course, there have been a lot of new people come into the job market since then. So we really need to create more jobs than that. Uh, we are encountering some strong headwinds in our effort to dig out of this recession. The strongest headwind, of course, is the high price of oil and gas which is a tax on consumers, it is a tax on our businesses, uh, and it comes at a very bad time. And uh, we all are looking for ways to try to deal with that, but frankly, it is a difficult thing to legislate a solution to. Uh, another headwind of, is, is one of our own creation, and that is the constant drumbeat that we hear to cut spending at all levels of government. Cut it here in Washington, cut it at the state level, cut it at the local level. Uh, my own strong view is that we should heed Professor Blinder's advice. We need to continue to work to keep investing in those things that will help us create good paying jobs. Timing is important. We clearly need to reduce the deficit, but we should adopt policies this year that will put us on a long term path to reduce the deficit, but I hope these policies will delay major cuts in spending and major increases in taxes until we can come out of this recession uh, some additional distance. Now let me talk about the deficit, the second of the challenges that I talked about before. We have a, a chart here called Federal Revenues and Outlays as a Percentage of Gross Domestic Product. This is for a 40-year period from 1970 to 2010, and it's a chart that the Congressional Budget Office prepared and, and has presented to us. Uh, clearly, uh, there's some important points you can take away from this chart. Number one, on average, over the last 40 years, that's since 1970, federal government, the federal government has accounted for 20.7 percent of gross domestic product. The spending by the federal government, on average, has accounted for that. Over that same period, on average, we have raised 18.1% of gross domestic product uh, in the form of revenues. So 
On average, we have been running a deficit of about 3% each year, 3% of gross domestic product each year during this 40-year period. Today, that 3% of gross domestic product is about $450 billion. The one time during this 40 years when we achieved a balanced budget and even ran a surplus for a four-year period was at the end of the 1990s and in the year 2000. How do we manage to do that? Well, beginning in 1990, the Congress passed and President George H.W. Bush signed a bill that both restrained spending and raised taxes. Again in 1993, and again in 1997, Congress passed, and in that case, President Clinton signed budget plans that did even more to do what had been done in 1990. That is, they, they, both of those plans restrained spending and raised revenues. We enjoyed a strong economy during those years in question, and that, of course, helped to bring more revenue into the government and helped to get us to a balanced budget and a surplus. So what went wrong that caused us to once again fall into deficit? I'd cite three factors that caused it. First, the tax cuts that, that Congress enacted in the last decade. Beginning in 2001, then again in 2003, Congress passed what have, been come, have come to be known as the Bush tax cuts. These fairly drastically reduced the revenue coming to the federal government. At the same time that we were cutting taxes, we ramped up federal spending, primarily for defense, and that's a result of the Afghan war and the Iraq war. Estimate there is something like $1.3 trillion has, has gone into those efforts. And, and in addition to defense, we ramped up spending on health care, primarily by including a prescription drug benefit in Medicare. Now, all of that increased spending occurred without any increase in revenues to pay for it. I repeat, none of this spending was offset with increased revenues. And a third factor, of course, that has brought us into the very serious deficit that we now face is the slowdown of economic activity. Uh, this contributed substantially to increased expenses for the government in some of the entitlement programs, uh, Medicaid, and food stamps, and a variety of them, uh, but also the decreased revenues. And when people are earning less money, they pay less in taxes, and less revenue comes to the government to pay for those services that the government is providing. The deficit, of course, has wor worsened substantially in the last two years because of, first, the reduced federal taxes that were being collected, largely a result of the recession, and second, uh, increased federal spending, uh, both because there's more demand for government services uh, as a result of the recession, and also because we passed the Recovery Act uh, to stimulate the economy. And I think most economists would conclude that it has helped to stimulate the economy. The Pew Fiscal Analysis Initiative analyzed the policies and legislation that have caused the surpluses of the late 1990s to become the deficits that we see today. And they produced a, a list showing their conclusions. Now, this is right here on, on this chart. And you can see these are in the order of importance, the, the, the order in which they contributed to the current deficit situation. The top two drivers in this list are the 2001 and 2003 tax cuts. They, they account for about 13% of what we face today in deficits. And the Iraq-Afghanistan wars, which, rep, which account for about 10% of, of what we face. All tall tax cuts caused 21% of deficits since 2001. Defense spending caused 15% of deficits. This is increased defense spending. Two-thirds of, of that was due to Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, increased non-defense spending caused 10% of the deficits we currently face. Recovery Act itself caused 6%. Medicare prescription drug benefit caused 2%. The next and final chart that I have here shows how these policies have affected the deficit over time. Uh, the changes caused, uh, this, this is a, uh, 
a chart which is labeled why CBO's debt projections changed bet between 2001 and 2011, the specific policies and drivers that I know this is very difficult for anyone to, to see uh, uh, on a television, but uh, let me just make the main, uh, the main point. The main points are that the changes caused by the legislation uh, make up the large segments at the top of the chart, including interest charges. Uh, they, they caused 65% uh, of the deficits when you, when you look at these policy changes. The remaining 35% of deficits are the economic and the technical adjustments uh, to CBO's projections, primarily to reflect the lower revenue that we have enjoyed because of the recessions. Now, how do we dig out of the hole we're in? I'd say some simple, uh, obvious things. Number one, we need to keep the focus on growing the economy. As Professor Blinder said, do not put the economy on a diet. This is not the right time to do that. Second, uh, we need to agree, as we did in 1990 and 93 and 97, to a balanced package of spending cuts and tax increases that will once again put us on a path to a balanced budget. We have some serious proposals to work from in achieving this new deficit reduction plan. Of course, the President's Deficit Reduction Commission, the Simpson-Bowles Commission, um, Senator Domenici and uh, Alice Rivlin, the former uh, head of uh, the Congressional Budget Office, uh, put out a bipartisan commission report, which is uh, very constructive. The President himself has, has given the framework for a plan. Uh, there's a bipartisan group of senators, a gang of six, that are working to come up with a proposal. And of course, uh, Senator Conrad, who chairs the, the budget committee, is putting together a proposed uh, budget plan for that committee's consideration. All of these items that I've, all of these plans that I mentioned, follow the model used in the 1990s of combining both spending cuts and revenue increases. The only proposal that does not follow this model of a balanced package of spending cuts and tax increases is the budget that was passed by the House Republicans two weeks ago. Rather than raising revenue while cutting spending, it would cut revenue while cutting spending. In my view, this cannot lead us to a lower deficit. There's a lot of political polarization here in Washington. I remain hopeful that we can get a critical mass of right-thinking people to do the responsible thing, to come together on a balanced package of spending cuts and revenue increases that, that we can commit to uh, going forward. We should be able to agree on, on policies that grow the economy and shrink the long-term deficit. I pledge my best efforts to achieve these objectives. I urge my colleagues to work to do so as well. President, uh, I yield the floor, and I suggest you have some quorum.